I'll be in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. And as we've been studying this, this series of heart after, people after God's heart, I really believe it's more than just a, a series of teachings. But as I mentioned to you, this is a prophetic word for this generation. And I really feel this in my heart because I believe God would have us to be people after his heart. David was a man after God's heart. But I believe God wants our mar your marriage to be after God's heart, your children to be children after God's heart, to be your, your home, to be a home after God's heart, to be a man, a woman after God's heart. And I believe that when we do that, hear me clearly, that when we can truly start to say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pursue, passionately pursue your heart. When you touch the heart of God, everything that's in God's heart will be in your heart. See, too often, I believe, many of us have passionately pursued stuff that has left us empty. But if we can now say, God, I'm going to personally pursue you, watch how when you find God, you find your purpose. Somebody say amen and give God a clap if you're able to in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to continue looking at the life of David. And I believe this morning the message that God has um, had me to share and communicate to you through the teaching will give purpose to any pain you've been through. Verse 7, are you there? The word of the Lord reads like this. It says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or by his height, for I have rejected him. Listen very carefully. The Lord does not see things the way you see them. It says people judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the what? Okay. He's like, don't matter how guapo he is. Está bien guapo. No. He's cute. He got swag. I don't care. God says, look at the heart. Someone say the heart. Okay, that's what God is looking at. God's talking about the people that he chooses. Verse 8 says, Then Jesse told his son Abinadab to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, This is not the one the Lord has chosen. Next, Jesse summoned Shemiah, but Samuel said, Neither is this one the Lord has chosen. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these give you context, Samuel the prophet is coming to anoint the next king of Israel. And he's like, Jesse, there's none of these. The Lord told me one of your sons is next king, but none of these are. Verse 11, verse 11 then, Samuel, uh, then Samuel the prophet asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have, Jesse? He says, they're still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he is out. Someone say he's out. He's out in the fields watching the sheep and the goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down and eat until he arrives. Jesse, his own father, said he's out. He's out. He's out over there. Have you ever felt left out in life? Have you ever felt unwanted, overlooked? That's what David went through. Today I want to talk to you. The title of my message is When You Feel Left Out But Still Right in God's Plan. When you feel left out, but you're still right in God's plan. I want to talk to you about this feeling called left out. Would you bow your head? Father, I pray for our church this morning. I know that this subject matter is a very sensitive subject matter, Lord. Because I, I know if there's many people like me, that there's oftentimes we feel left out. We feel forgotten. We feel overlooked and unwanted. God, please give me the grace to communicate effectively what your word says, Lord. That I would give purpose to people's pain and give them clarity to their confusion. May your word and your Holy Spirit go through every seat and touch every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. The church of the living Lord says, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap, and you may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Someone say, I'm still in God's plan. Come on, someone got that revelation. Go ahead. Let me recap for a second here and uh, just to bring us all up to speed and, and to kind of know where we're at. But I've been talking to you about raising up a generation after the heart of God that will do all of his will. And we've been, we've been uh, looking at the life of David and how David was a man after God's own heart. And I showed you how God wants to raise us up. That God is, God is looking to raise up people from one place to what next, the higher place or to the next level. Scripture tells us he wants to take us from glory to, not glory, glory. Come on, somebody, all right? And, and, and God is often looking at our lives, not where we're at, but where we're going. Tell your neighbor, God is more interested in where you're going. Say, God is more interested in where you're going. 
Now, if you're wondering, why do I keep talking to my neighbor? We call this holy harassment in church, okay? And this is called, I'm going to keep bugging you till you get it. No, I'm joking. Okay. But we, 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 we need to understand that God wants to raise you up. And I can say that confidently. I can say that today on the authority of God's word. I can say that to you with conviction because I know God wants to raise you up and take you, take you to become a, a man of God, to take you to become a person walking in victory, to take you to, to be a, a Goliath uh, killer, to take you to be a person who takes down the, the generational Goliaths in your family, to take you to be a person who establishes his kingdom, to take you to be a person who worships not stuff but God, to take you to a person who fights for the right stuff, that God wants to raise up every man, woman, and child, and every child in the kids' church, come on somebody, to be people after God's heart. Somebody give God a clap if you believe that in Jesus' name. God wants to raise you up. Now you say, well, how do you know that, Pastor? I mean, how can you say a statement like that? You know, I just came to church this morning. I know that because you're here. Because you're here. And there was something in every single person that just inside of you brought you here this morning. And I, and I, and I know it was more than just your mom. Come on, somebody. Something brought you here. My wife. No! Something inside of you said there's more to life. Something inside of you put you in a divine discomfort that you're just like, I need to be there. I, I need to be there. I, I, I need to get into that place because I'm searching for answers. There has to be more. There has to be God can take me to, to, to a next level or to another place or, or just to be able to get closer to Him. I know that because you're here. And that thing inside of you that thing inside of you is searching for the God purpose in your life. It's, 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 it's inside of you crying out to, to find the God purpose, to find the God design for your life. I love what Billy Graham says. A life that has not come to God is like a pencil that has been sharpened. It has no point. Because you haven't found the Creator. And all of us are born with this hole in our soul and it's not fulfilled until we fill it with the presence and the purpose of God. And I know that God wants to raise you up because just like he raised up David, he wants to raise you to be a person after his own heart. If you believe that, say amen and give God a hand clap this morning at the Regal Theater Cinemas. Amen. Now, when I consider the life of David, when I look at the life of David, the only person in all the scripture that God called a man after his own heart, I look at the life of David, and it was not all peaches and cream. There was difficulty. And David went through some difficulty that God rose him up, not through the roses, but through the difficulties of life. David battled some pretty hefty things. I told you last week or a, few, a couple weeks ago that one of the first things David had to deal with was rejection. And we all deal with rejection at certain times. Here is David, because the Bible said God raised up David for them to be king, but notice God raised him up. He didn't just, you know, place him there. He raised him there. And many times we want God to place us certain places, but God isn't going to place you there. He's going to raise you there because if you don't have the character to match the gifting, then your gifting will buckle when you raise the next level because gifting, won't, gifting will get you there, but character will keep you there. And so you can stay there and get to the next place. Somebody just say amen. And so God was building David's heart. But God used certain things in life, and listen to me uh, uh, dearly, is God used some difficult things to develop David's heart. And one of the things was rejection. I told you that, you know, that David, when the prophet, the prophet Samuel came to anoint the next king to Jesse's sons, Jesse, his own father, didn't even consider David to be king material. He's like, he lined up all of his sons because how they looked on the outward and this must be king. And he totally rejected his, his only, pre him presenting only those seven other brothers was him rejecting David saying, you, 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 you're, not, you're not king material. You'll never be that. Come on, go back to where you belong. And he was rejected by his own father. And listen, maybe you're here and you've gone through some rejection. I just want to remind you, just because you're rejected by man, remind, remember this, you are accepted by God. And God has accepted you. God will elevate you and place you to a next level. Someone say amen. I went through rejection in life, a lot of it. When I was, I'll never forget, when I was in junior high, I was a very troubled young man. My, my father walked out on, on my mom and, Left her with five boys, and I was a very troubled young boy, a lot of frustration and anger. 
And I never forget, you know, in junior high, I, I was very problematic, but I would often find myself because of my misbehavior in the principal's office, rightfully so. But I'll never forget sitting in the assistant principal's office, and one time he looked at me. Here I am, just a little, just a little tyke. And I, and I was going through stuff, but he looked at me, and my assistant principal told me, he says, you know what you're going to be? You're going to be a loser when you grow up. You're going to be a loser and people like you, they don't make it in life. And you're going to be full of excuses of why you didn't make it. But the truth is, it's because you're a loser. And I remember sitting there as a young boy, confused, I, not even really even knowing how to respond with, the, with the, my hand and a little fist. And I remember he got this close in my face, this close. And he says, go ahead, hit me so I can put you in juvenile hall. I had my little fist, and man, I was so badly wanted to. It, it, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't punch him. I slapped him. Just kidding. No, I was like, in my mind, of course, this all played out, but, but I didn't do anything. But let me tell you something. I never hit him, and I didn't end up physically in juvenile hall, but the damage was done because I lived in the prison of rejection, thinking that maybe people like me don't make it. Maybe people that are troubled like me, I'd never get out of a, a, a small a ghetto mentality. Remember, may, maybe fatherless boys like me will always be frustrated. Maybe I will always have excuses as to why I couldn't overcome that. Maybe I'll just live with excuses that are socially acceptable of why I wasn't able to get out of this mentality. But oh, something happened on February 16, 1997. I was introduced, come on somebody, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was introduced to my purpose in God and I received and I, I said, God, I'm excited and you can raise me up you can be a father to the fatherless God you can develop me you can change me and I'll believe your word over any man's word and so therefore God I will come out of this come on somebody give God a clap if you believe God can change and raise you up rejection but the second thing that David dealt with was something very close to many of us here this morning it's the feeling of being left out you may think, God, why would you let David go through all this stuff? And I just, I want to submit to you that God doesn't do this to us. God allows us to go through it because it's through those difficult moments that we develop something called character. I got one amen. The rest are like, I ain't going to receive that. Come on, somebody. God is more concerned with your character than your comfort. Got a couple amens on that one. God is more con concerned with you being holy than happy. I want to be happy. God's like, I want you to be holy. I want to be comfortable. God says, I want to build a character in you. And you're not going to learn it going through the easy things in life, but you're going to learn it going through the darkest valleys that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because God, you are are with me somebody give God a clap if you're with me this morning in Jesus name now David went through this thing called left out now really quick as I prepare here to give you your first point the Bible says in verse 11 in the scriptures we just read to give you context that when Samuel asked where's David his father replied he's out in the field he's out he's out he's out he's left out He's over there. Have you ever felt left out? Have you ever felt unwanted, overlooked? Have you, have you ever felt abandoned, not in the in crowd, the weird one, the misfit? Have you ever been maybe the one, you know, you're going through the, the, your, your social media and you're like, T, hashtag TFTI. Some of you don't know what that means. Thanks for the invite. You ever just like, man, what's up? I thought we friends. You ever felt left out? You ever felt like, man, I'm not, I'm not, how come I'm not in that, that crowd? Or how come I, I, I'm, I'm left out? And, and maybe you, you don't just feel it in the sense of, of, of social things, but maybe you feel left out when you're like, man, I feel like everybody else's marriage is doing good and mine's not. God, I feel left out. Did you like forget about me? You just say, boom, 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 not you. Did you skip me? Maybe you feel like, God, everybody else is getting promotions and I'm not. I feel left out. Maybe you're, maybe you're sitting here at this service right now. Maybe you're listening to this message and you feel left out like, that's not for me. Maybe you, because you, see, the enemy will try to make you come to church and be like, you don't fit here. You don't belong here. You're left out. But I want to submit to you this morning is this, 
that even though don't ever feel like if something's wrong when you feel excluded. Because sometimes, just like David, God is using you right where you are to develop you, to have you trust in God, not in people, not in stuff, not in things. Come on, somebody say amen. Talk to me this morning, second service. Because I know how the devil messes with, with, with you because he messes with me. You see people over there, you feel left out, and you go, they're talking about me. They're talking, no, let me tell you something. They ain't, they ain't talking about you. I'll move on. Let me give you your first point. Write this in. If we're going to be people after God's heart that he can rise up, then point number one, write this into your notes if you're taking notes. Then we must rise above the feeling of being left out. If we're going to be the, the people that God wants to rise up, to be the, the people, why did God want to rise up David? Because David would later on take down the generational Goliath. He will later on take down that present day Goliath. He would, he, and I know that many of you in this place, listen, God wants to raise you up because you are called to take down the present day Goliath. You are called to take down a generational Goliath in your family. And God wants to raise you up and say, who in your family will finally, I can rise up that will take down that Goliath of divorce, that Goliath of addiction, that Goliath of depression, that Goliath of suicide, that Goliath of negativity, that Goliath of, of poverty. Who can I raise up? And I believe God wants to raise you up. Come on, somebody, to break that generational Goliath and begin giving generational blessing. Tell your neighbor, he's talking to you. Tell your second choice, and you. Because you know you always have two choices, first choice and then your second choice. He's talking to us. In verse 11 of Samuel 16, it says, But Jesse replied, he's out in the fields. He is out in the fields. He was out, but he was in the place God wanted him to be. Now imagine David could have, when he was sitting there, let's, let's, let's jump into the story here. I imagine when David was, sit, was in that place in the fields watching the sheep and the goats, and, and, and he was, and uh, you know, what's his, the, the, the brothers were over there. I imagine he could have been sitting there saying things like, Man, nobody appreciates me. He could have said things like, man, I don't, I, I don't matter to anybody. He could have said things like, man, I hate being left out. After all that I do, I'm the one, you know, cutting the sheep, getting all the, the sheep wool so that they can have clothes and they can have, you know, all, all, all that. Uh, God, so his man. I'm the one doing all that stuff, and, and they, ain't even, they ain't even inviting me to the party. He could, have, he could have said all that, but I'm convinced that he didn't. Ask me why. Because God said he looked at the heart. And I'm convinced that if David said that, then he would have never been chosen to be the next king. But God chose him because I believe when David was in that moment, he was saying, he wasn't saying that, but rather he had a heart check saying, listen, it doesn't matter what group I'm in or what group I'm not in, what little clique or what this or what that, or even if they're doing this, they're doing that. God, I am right where you want me to be. And if I'm not there, then you must not want me there. You want me right here. So God, I'm going to be faithful and fruitful. I'm going to trust you. You're my purpose. You're my guiding light. Come on, somebody. You're the one who's going to raise me up. Now, I know this is, it's easier to clap to than to live through. Because it sounds good in church. Hey, yeah. But then you don't get invited. Then, then you feel like, how come they're getting blessed? Listen, I am convinced. I'm convinced. I'm convinced about this. I am convinced that, that, that God will oftentimes, often, sometimes, God will oftentimes bless somebody else with what you want just to check your heart. Oh, yeah. He'll be like, huh? Huh? Are you serious, Lord? And watch this. And sometimes they're not even like, like godly. And you're like, God. They're like, you know, I went to the pachanga. And I went to church. I know I'm preaching to somebody here this morning. Oh, I went, I went to church and I listened to that guy scream with that shiny jacket for like 30 minutes. What's up, God? What's up? I believe God will do that uh, sometimes to check our hearts. Where's your purpose? Where really, where's your value really? Is it in the stuff or is it in him? Because the eyes of the Lord were not in that little beauty pageant of, hey, is it me? The eyes of the Lord 
where, where David was. Saying, I want to use you. God oftentimes will look at our reaction. And I want to submit to you, perhaps instead of adopting a bad attitude, we should adopt a praise attitude and say, you know, God, it's all good. It's all good. If you give it to them, then whatever, you must be trying to reach them by your goodness, God, even though they have it. Go ahead. I celebrate. Congratulations, God. You got something better for me. You haven't forgotten about me, my purpose. You're going to call my number. When you call my number, my number will be there and no man will stop what God wants to do in my life. And so I'm going to be faithful right where I am. Somebody give God a clap. If you can give God praise in the middle of your difficulty we must rejoice in the lord listen to me if we're gonna we we must rise above the feeling of being left out rise above that feeling of being left out now i've been in many difficult situations many trials and and oftentimes they're some of the most confusing times to be in but i want to give you purpose like i said sometimes through your pain i want to reach you first peter chapter one verses six through seven to give you purpose sometimes when you're going through those trials because that was a trial for David. He felt left out. And, I, and there'll be times you will feel left out. But don't succumb to the emotions of, uh, of feeling like God is not with you because he's with you. Tell your neighbor, he's talking to me. Tell him, tell your neighbor, he's talking to me. Holy harassment number five. I got you, okay? Verse six. Watch me now. Watch what the scripture says. Peter writes this who is a follower, was a follower of Jesus and knows what it is to go through some hard times and come out on the back end victorious, right? He writes this, so be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. Some of you don't want to hear that right now. It's all right. He says, you must endure for a little while. He's like, have a joy. Watch verse 7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It ain't fuchi, it's the real stuff. Come on, somebody. That was a joke to Gucci to fuchi. Get it? Okay, all right. It's genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. And though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through, the tri- through many trials. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but the scripture is preaching to somebody. When your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole wide world. The www.freedomhouse. It, when the whole wide world sees what you went through, but you went through and you didn't get it didn't get you but you still came out on the other side the world is going to see man look how god did not forget him there must be a god because man if robert got saved if if, if they made it i can make it come on somebody give god a shout of praise in this place amen see I, i i am convinced i'm convinced that the size of our praise is connected to the hell we just got came out of some of you got that some of you didn't when you only got bright out of a little, you'll go, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, I missed that traffic. Thank you, Lord. But when God brought you out of some heavy stuff, glory and honor, when it is revealed on that day to the whole wide world. That's why don't ever judge somebody who's next to you. They're like, where's being? You're like, man, I should got another seat. Chill out. Like, just in church, you know, like, chill. It's just Sunday, May, May 17th. What's wrong with this person right here? You have no idea. Their child might have just came home. We've been gone for a year. And they're like, thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. Don't judge somebody. They might be like, I had cancer. And man, woo, you have no idea. God just healed me. You're like, whoa. Calm down. Praise the Lord. No. Because when God blesses you, when you you come out, you're like, God, to whom much is forgiven, much is loved. God, I love you. I'm not left out. I'm right in the place you have for me. Because because watch what happened. They said, go get, go, go, go get David. It was like, huh? Oh, now you guys want me. Now, come on, somebody, right? 
Go get David. What? No time to clean up. Just get in here. What? Oh, man. Yeah, what's up? You're the next king. Me? Because when God calls your number, when God calls you, God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. Let me go a little deeper. Can I go a little deeper? Let's keep reading 1 Peter chapter 4. Now let's go to verse chapter 4, okay? We're in chapter 1. Let's go to chapter 4. P Peter loves to talk about trials, and I just want to encourage somebody. Maybe you're going through trials. Read Peter, the whole book. All the, the whole book. It's only six chapters. Chill out, okay? The whole book. So you're like, what? The whole book? Come on. 1 Peter 4, 12 through 13. Watch what, watch, watch what Peter writes. It's Peter, because see, Peter, Peter been through some stuff. He says, dear friends. He says, amigos. Dear friends. Don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through. <laughs> I love this. As if something strange were, strange things are happening to me. Now we're having fun with it, but he's like, don't be surprised you're going through stuff. Like something strange when you're going through trials. What happened? You're not going to believe it. I'm going through it, bro. Me. Can you believe it? Me. Faithful man of God, me. I ain't getting any amens, but it's okay. Don't be surprised. Just don't act like something strange is happening. He says, that's, that's par for course. That's par for course. Okay, let me, let me put it like this. Um, you ever have to meet somebody and like you're like, hey, I'll meet you at 1 o'clock. Okay, 1 o'clock. Be there. Be there, girl. That's my girl voice. Be there, girl. You know? Okay. They're like, oh, you know what? They get there like 121. They're like, there was traffic. I know, man, really? You act surprised. There's traffic on the five freeway, and you're surprised. Right? There was traffic. You, you, hello, it's the five freeway. Of course there's going to be traffic. You, imagine being surprised going, oh, my goodness, there's traffic on the five freeway. You're not going to be surprised. Why? You're not going to be like, it's strange. It's weird. Like, what? There's traffic. What's going on? Oh, my goodness, Jesus is coming back. Traffic. No, you're going to, in your mind, go, it's par for course. There's going to be traffic because that's the five freeway. And welcome to Southern California. It is what it is. Everybody has a car, two cars, three cars. Everybody wants a car, bunch of cars, on the, right? And, and, and they're always working on the freeway for like the last 45 years. Anyhow, you know, there's traffic. You're not surprised. You're just, that's the way it is. The same is true in the things of God. There is going to be some traffic on the way to your destiny, on the way to your breakthrough. And so when things come, be like, I was ready for you. Come on, somebody. Let me continue being faithful. Let me continue praising God. Let me continue, come on, having faith. Somebody say amen because I'm ready for this. Give God a clap this morning, church. It says, don't act like it's strange. People, you know, oh, my God, we're going through stuff. Yeah. Because that's what happens when you start to take territory. Verse 13. Watch this now. He says, instead. Tell your neighbor, say instead. He says, be very glad. You're like, what is Peter smoking? Nothing. He says, he says be very glad. Watch this. For these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering. So that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the what? World. Your life will become this, the testimony. Your life will become the story. Your life will become the hope. Your life will be like, if you did it for them, you could do it for me. If anyone here has ever been through something difficult, one trial, like you've been through some difficult stuff, one trial in your life, okay, I want you to lift your right hand. That's you. Just lift your right hand. You've been through one thing, okay? Watch this now. Watch it because you're going to see in here how God does this. If you've been through two trials, two difficult things in your life, lift your left hand, okay? If you've been through at least three difficult things in your life, lift your right foot. If you're like, if you're like, you know what, Pastor? If you like Google weather.com, I've been through so many storms, my name is gonna come up because my life sometimes is a storm. Lift your other foot. Come on, somebody. Okay, but guess what? You're still here. And the fact and the fact that you're still here is God is still faithful. He didn't leave you out. You were right in the place he wanted you to be. Because it come on. 
because he wanted to raise you up. Someone give God a hand clap in this place. He wanted to put your life on display. Look at it. I don't forget about my children. I don't forget about their lives. I know it may look like it, but I got them right where I want them. Hey! Watch verse 19. Watch this. I got to close here. I got, I'm not going to get to my second point. I was, I was being, come back next Sunday. You're a season ticket holder. Bring the same note sheet. Free entrance to this movie theater. Come on, somebody. Okay, free 19. Verse 19. It says, so, watch this now. If you are suffering in a manner that pleases God, in other words, there is one way to go through a trial that doesn't please God, and there's another way to go through a trial that does please God. The way that doesn't please God is the same way that the nation of Israel, when they were going from Egypt to the promised land in the desert, they were complaining, why me, Lord? Now, again, I know it's difficult when you're there, but you've got to remember, God, there's a purpose to this. There's a purpose to my pain. I'm not left out. I'm right in the place you want me to be, and you're going to use this for your glory. Watch this. He says, keep on doing what is what? Keep on doing what is because guess what? You're not left out. You're right in the place he wants you to be. And trust your lives to God. I'm sorry. Trust your lives to the God who created you. Watch this last sentence and I close. For he will never fail you. He will never fail you. I'm not telling you this today. It's just preaching this as a good message. I'm living this, church. Some of you know, last, literally one week ago, my wife was bleeding. She's six weeks pregnant. And we're trying to say, man, devil, you ain't going to rob this child. We went to the doctor this last week. The baby's doing better. But you don't think the enemy tries to mess with us and tell us, oh, you know, look, 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 look. You're going to lose this baby. Oh, look. Oh, no, God, never will you leave us. Never will you fail us, God. Our trust is in you. And I just want to tell someone here this morning, this second service, you're not left out. You're not left out. You're not left out. You're right where God wants you. And never will he fail you. He's going to see you through. In Jesus' name. Somebody give God a hand clap. Amen.